name is Benji. So one of my favorite things about keeping plants and growing them is like all of the creative ways that you can present them and display them and grow them. So this is just one example. It's the first one that I'm gonna show you guys. It's called a kokedama. It directly translates from Japanese to English as moss ball. Koke means moss, and then dama means ball. Just generally, I feel like I'm someone who gets bored of things pretty easily. But with plants, I feel like I can never be bored. Like one, there's just so many plants in the world. Like I'll never be able to grow them or attain all of them. Also, there's just so many beautiful ways that you can grow them and display them and integrate them into your space. So yeah, that's one of my favorite things. I feel like they can add so much to a home. And I think the way that you present them is really critical in how they interact in your space. Okay, um, I'm not like a designer or anything, but that's just how I approach plants. One of the methods that I'm gonna show you guys today, I haven't actually done myself before, so I'm testing it out. I don't know if it'll work out well or not. So the first one I'm gonna show you how to make is the Kokedama. The plant I'm using for my Kokedama is a philodendron Jose Buono. So what you're gonna need for this project is some moist sphagnum moss, um, I'll put the links in the description for the things I'm using. And then you're also gonna need some type of string. I'm using transparent fishing line. So pretty much what you're gonna do is create a ball around your plant's roots with moss. The way that I make my kokedamas is different than how they're traditionally made. Normally you use soil as the center that your plant is planted in, but I'm just using sphagnum moss. I do this just because it's easier for me and it works. What you're gonna wanna do is take your sphagnum moss and then kind of create a ball around it and do your best to make it a little bit dense and create that ball shape so that way it's easier to wrap it. Then you're gonna wanna take your string and just continuously wrap it around your moss to hold it together in its ball shape and then once your kokedama feels secure and like it's not gonna fall apart you can just cut off the end and then knot your string together so one of the reasons why I use the fishing line is that even if you wrap it around the moss ball multiple times you still can't see it and it's not visible if you use other string like twine or a colored cotton thread then it becomes pretty visible if you wrap your string multiple times around the moss also over time organic materials like twine and cotton will degrade and your moss ball can fall apart and then I cut off the excess string and then I start kind of cleaning up the moss ball by trimming off some flyaways that are kind of sticking out from the ball. One of the ways that you could display the kokedama is on a nice ceramic dish or a glass um, or a plate or something like that and just water it kind of like you would a normal house plant whenever the moss gets dry. If you want your kokedama to have live moss, you pretty much just do the same thing that you did earlier and wrap the live moss around the kokedama. This is moss that I grow myself, but you could also buy it from Etsy or something. One of the downsides of using just sphagnum moss and not using soil is that it will dry out very quickly. So one way to prevent this is by keeping it in a dome. Another way to display your kokedamas is by hanging them. And this is really easy to do. So you're gonna take a piece of your string, um, then you're gonna wanna find a spot where you can tuck in your new piece of string and then create a knot. And this is hard for me to explain, but you're gonna want to take the end of it and then knot it in a way that you can make a loop. Um, that way you can hang it on hooks and stuff like that. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is remove this plant from its pot and then kind of make it into a kokedama. So right now it's just planted in 
sphagnum moss and that's just what I'm gonna be keeping it in. So this is a Vanda pot. It's traditionally used for orchids. I'm gonna be hanging it up with this uh, metal wire. So I really like this wire because it's really malleable, but it's also very strong. What I'm doing is I'm just gonna be using it to hang the pot. I'm only gonna be hanging it from one corner, that way um, the pot faces outwards. So what I'm doing here is just wrapping the wire around itself, that way it will stay in place. And then I trim off the excess, but be careful because it can be kind of sharp. So now I'm making it into a kokedama, doing the same exact thing I did um, earlier. So now that I have my plant wrapped in this moss ball, I'm going to somehow attach it to this orchid box. So yeah, I think I'm gonna use the fishing line and then kind of like tie it into it. Uh, we'll see how that turns out. definitely be secured a little bit better but I think we are getting there and now what I'm gonna do is just tuck in more sphagnum moss around in the corners that don't have any and then hopefully it will look cool This is it. It kind of turned out exactly how I had hoped. I'm gonna hang it right there and see how that looks. So all I'm gonna do is twist it. Wait, one closer. <laughs> it's just like this and then I make the loop and then I'm just going to like twist it and twist it and twist it. I don't know if this is how you're like really supposed to use this stuff, but um, this is what works for me. Okay, also, it can get kind of sharp on the end, so make sure you're careful when you handle this stuff. Now I have, like, this hook, or this, what would you call this? Not a hook. Like a loop? Yeah, now, <laughs> that's a good one. <laughs> so now I have this loop that I can just, like, put right here, and voila. Wow. No, it looks She's good, She's sickening. Right? Yeah, I think it looks good. <laughs> okay, so this last thing that I'm gonna show you guys isn't really like super innovative or anything. It's just a way that I found out is pretty easy to hang plants. Um, so I wouldn't really do this with anything that's super heavy, but um, I found that with plastic nursery pots, this is a really great method. So I'm using this metal wire again. The first thing that you do is create a circle around the lip of the pot. And you kind of just do what I did before, where I sort of just like wrap the string and make it kind of tight. Then you're gonna cut off the excess. Okay, so now you have this like little ring thing that you can put your pot into like this and it will hold it. Then you can use like the excess that you cut off and then wrap it around like this. And now you just do this like three more times. Um, you are gonna wanna like twist all of these three up top together. Now you have this really easy pot hanger. It's really easy to like put this anywhere if you wanted to hang it on the wall. You could just like put a little thumbtack in or something and then you just put it on top. You'd do it nicer, but you kind of get the gist. And then now you have something hanging like that. You know, kind of fix up the wire to make it look nicer. Yeah, it's really easy to hang like small pots like that. Another thing you could do is just put it on like your curtain rod, just put it on top like that. I'm kind of sweaty because I have to have the fan off when I record or else it makes a really loud noise. But yeah, thanks for watching. I hope you learned something. And also we're almost at 50,000 subscribers, which is kind of crazy, I remember. A couple months ago, I was getting like super excited over 3,000 or 4,000 or something, and I can't 
believe that I'm like at this point. I'm kind of living out my tween dreams of being a YouTuber, so thank you so much for watching. Uh, I'm gonna go take a shower because I'm super sweaty. Um, I love you. Goodbye.